do want to make sure that uh, we're able to communicate quickly about um, what we're, what we're trying to do. Um, second is we did want to build a fairly typical Silicon Valley based structure, incentive structure, so that we could attract uh, you know, the best and the brightest um, uh, to the cost. So um, getting the best engineers, the best photographers, the best, the best security folks, um, the, the best business development people to go out and promote a really interesting business development opportunity um, uh, or uh, sort of uh, mission in that um, we want to get people on the network, but we're not asking them to sign licenses or contracts. We don't make transaction fees. Um, OpenPoint itself is a software company. We're never in the transaction itself for all kinds of reasons. Um, so we want to maintain that where anybody can build wherever they want to build on top of it. And, and then they can charge whatever they want for, for their business. So, uh, you know, that, that does take the, uh, a lot of resources to do that. Um, we also wanted to be able to attract um, world-class venture capital, like uh, I think we've seen the beginnings of that. We want to do that globally. So, we, for example, we just brought on Google Ventures and IDG China, uh, which I think is really important. So that, that was really the reason that we wanted to make sure that we had enough um, incentive built into the company so that we could do the absolute best job in building the network. So if we can build a great network, that's going to be great for everybody. And then we, um, I guess in some ways we view it as the flip side of that is we are going to be able to give away um, a tremendous value to, to the world. We're giving away uh, you know, just huge amounts of uh, ripple uh, in you know, fairly small amounts but to as many people as we possibly can. We've done a little bit of that already. Um, we're going to be starting uh, that pretty robust to be starting here at the end of the month, and then you'll see a variety of programs rolled out. So we think that is sharing in you know, the seniors, basically, that uh, if, we're, if we're successful, that we created. And then even the amounts that uh, you know, the company and the founders have, you know, at some point that's going to be uh, basically injected into the economy as well. Uh, that will be over a period of time. So whether or not open point can even get you to the background, and this is just completely um, you know, run by an open source community, that's entirely possible. Um, our, our view is that how, how do we custom this you know, for the next at least a couple of years to, to build the best network we possibly can. And if we can do that, the you know, benefits to the world will be, will be great. And if we don't succeed, then you know, we'll, we'll give it our best shot, but we'll have the consequences for that for so that was, that was what I think of mine. Thank you, Chris. Next question? Well, uh, I'm going to just clear your answer to the question about my point. Why would people outside of the current situation again, why would they transact on right or they can do this as easily with the Bitcoin? You say, like, they store very easily. Because you have prior points. If you have prior points in one framework and the Bitcoin, you have to have, pay the exchange fee. And uh, there would, it would be better if you could make applications without having to incur that cost. Um, so if, say, your hosting provider accepts strike points, then you would use that directly before you then convert the remaining of the coins. Yeah, I rephrase it. Why would people in this room buy strike coins to do this instead of just transacting? You the wouldn't. There's no reason to. And I agree with you. No, but if the people in this room run businesses, you know, there's no reason why you shouldn't have, you know, the ability to accept strike coins. Hey, you mark it up, you know, the prices go up to no, accept. Yeah, accepting strike coins or accepting virtual bananas is not a problem. Well, I mean, if you if you're if you're traveling in, in Europe and you have dollars in your pocket and the store accepts dollars or they accept euros, why would you swipe and use euros? Yeah, they accept euros because there are some people who give them euros. The question: Why do people acquire those those euros? But buy them in the first place so that the shops will physically accept them. Well, I mean, okay. they're, they're giving out through mining, and um, right now we have miners on our network. Hopefully soon we're going to switch to merge mining, and then you might as well, you know, throw your Bitcoin pool at, at getting some dry coins too. And once you have them, like I said, you know, you could immediately turn around and turn those into Bitcoin. So there's no reason why you can't. But if there is something that you want, you need, or there's an investment opportunity in dry coins, then why, why take the hit? Okay, but I rephrase the question once again. Mining doesn't create the value. Miners create something for some other people to use, right? So if somebody mines a dry coin, an expectation that you can use it with someone, you know, if I'm not going to buy it, then it's fine. Okay, so uh, we, I have you take this offline. This is a lot of the, the, okay. the, the left part of what I want to say is that we, so we split the initial distribution on Frycoin. Um, 20% of it goes to the miners, 80% of it is the industry through a foundation. 
Um, it's a registered nonprofit in California, and we're um, developing proposals for how to do that. One example, for example, is uh, to integrate with Point, which is used for like holding at home and study at home, things like that. Um, so instead of you know throwing hash power at, at doing shots on these, you could throw it at your favorite you know science project, um, and then you would be able to do distributions, one-time distributions through the statistics of the Point server. Um, and we have another proposal in mind where we can match in. Um, Donations to charities. Um, we're working with a with a large I named mean, uh, Bitcoin payment processor to, to to get that going. And so, launched. so in other words, with Bitcoin, like buying Bitcoin is like a way to give to charities, right? For your organization. Yeah, and initially, and then once the price coins are out in the market, then people people who have them will want to spend them, and, and it'll move very quickly. The, the history with commercial currencies is that. Uh, once they're once they're out in existence, people tend to spend them very fast. I mean, the entire monetary base circulates in, in the world of banks, um, and and that's really the point to have the putting. And I see that we only have ten minutes left, so we'll, we'll take a couple more questions. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. This is for anybody who'd like to answer it. Uh, I'm from the Let's Talk Bitcoin show. Um, it seems like the regulatory system only seems to care about the transition points going into and out of fiat currency and cryptos. Do you think there's a role for a transitionary altcoin that? makes its entire focus on compliance, disclosure, and transparency, and enables essentially that transaction from fiat into crypto, because once you're in crypto, you can basically go to any crypto that you want, and it's very easy. So do you, that's a question. Um, I, I have a few opinions on that. I, I think Bitcoin does make it pretty easy to do regulatory compliance. It's just the people who are actually using Bitcoin who need to follow through with regulatory compliance. Bitcoin can be fairly trans transparent. I mean, you just look at the blockchain and see where the money does come from. I think adding uh, an alternate currency on top of it to make the transition in between the two easier is actually just maybe making things more complicated. You know, anything that you would do from Bitcoin to this other currency to, to fiat, you could do just with Bitcoin to fiat. So. Aren't there inherent limitations in that because of the anonymity of Bitcoin? But I'm talking about something that would have real identities tied to it that almost be, that would solve a lot of these regulatory compliance problems. There was a lightning talk yesterday by Roman Stifko on, on uh, adding regulatory compliance to Bitcoin. Um, and so he has some proposals in that regard. Uh, I, I would say if you ask the regulators what their coin would look like, it would look like the modern banking system. Um, <laughs> so this has to be a back and forth. I mean, we, we have our proposals, they have theirs, and even the other. Um, recently, Amazon came out with some coins. Um, do you think that a major corporation would ever allow merged mining and maybe like 1% of Bitcoin and it would go towards like a gift certificate towards a corporation? And almost like anybody under, anyone can mine a sliver of a coin and spend it at, at Amazon. Almost like an emotional item. If they do get into this, I expect that it'd be some through some sort of collectible proposal rather than create their own chains. But it's a possibility. You have to ask them why, why would they want to though? Because they you have a fair amount of control compared to compared, compared to the current Google and Amazon and credit systems, Facebook credits, things like that. I mean, they have much more control than they have. But it's possible. Okay. You, you know, something I I think that might end up happening down the road is I can certainly imagine large providers such as Comcast or something like that where you already have a piece of their hardware in their own one set top box. Uh, so on the forum, someone took an HDMI uh, box and reprogrammed the FPGA in it to mine bitcoins. So you can watch TV and mine bitcoins at the same time. Uh, so, so the idea of maybe a, a company like Comcast or even maybe a bank uh, doing some sort of situation where you get internet at home and television and your phone and inside the box with your own electricity, you know, they have a miner of some sort that's running, and perhaps they give you some little share of that, you know, maybe they reduce the cost of your internet or something. I mean, I could even imagine, you know, bank accounts in the future coming up with your own little home ASIC miner in which you, you know, the bank works on Bitcoin. You, you do your share in terms of paying for your own interest on your account by mining. The thing is, it's central bank. It's a company doing this. There's no reason why they would because my device is decentralized, right? So if they're, if they're just a company that they're using like Amazon coins, they're going to use their own coins back to their own system. There's no point in the 
Well, I, I would imagine that some of these, for example, set-top boxes that you do get, there's a lot of processing power left over that isn't being utilized. Certainly some uh, you know, company could put